What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Poker Vlog. Today we're headed out to play a cash game session. Should be a good one. Should be some decently high stakes. We get put to some pretty interesting tests. Play a couple of very big hands. Let's hope we can get another win for Gimli here. In the new year, he thinks he deserves a professional puppy spa day, so let's see if we can win enough in this session to make his little dog dreams come true. We're about to hop into the action right now. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button if you want to see more content like this. Time to hop in the hands. Let's get after it. Don't worry, guys. The results are coming at the end of the video. First hand of the night, we're looking down at King, Queen, and Clubs. We see a knit player open to $6. I'm going to raise it up to 25 bucks from the hijack. He goes into the tank before asking how much the bet is for, which is pretty obvious if you can see even close to across the table. Eventually, he puts in the call. So we are off to see a flop, which comes down a pretty great one for us. We are flopping top pair and the second nut flush draw. He checks pretty quickly. I'm going to bet again here. I'm going to go ahead and bet out $25. I feel like my hand is way too strong and he'll continue with something, I think. Although, like I said, he is a huge nit. I bet out $25. He goes into the tank for a little bit before eventually putting in the fold. So we take this one down, off to a good start, winning the first hand. Never feels bad to get a little bit of money out of the net. Looking down at Ace King from the button in this one, we're going to bet out $15 over a single limper who eventually will make the call. He's under the gun here. He limped under the gun, so kind of a weird spot. But we're off to see a flop, and boy is it a great flop for us. We're flopping top two pair here. There's two spades, so when the action checks to me, I think about betting, but I decide to go ahead and check and let my opponent try and catch up a little bit. Turn comes down the eight of spades, so obviously not great. The front door flush draw comes in, but I'm going to bet here. I bet out $15, and he makes the call. So we're off to see a river, hoping that we don't see a spade. And luckily enough, we do not see a spade. It's a six of clubs. We're going to bet out $25 here after he checks. He thinks about it for a little bit and eventually puts in the fold but tosses us his cards so we can have a look and it turns out he had pocket queens. So pretty much the worst flop imaginable for that hand. We're gonna go ahead and take this one down. He also didn't have a spade so that's pretty cool for us and not too cool for him. So we win a little one here. After flopping top two pair though, you gotta hope you can get a little bit more in the middle. A little bit late hitting the record button on this hand. I've got ace jack obviously from middle position. I win a $15 preflop and we get two callers. That's where we hit the record button. We're off to see a flop, which comes down a very reasonable one for us. It's queen 10 nines. We are flopping an open-ended straight draw. Pretty good flop. Not going to complain about that. When the action checks to me, I'm going to bet out here. I bet $20. We have one opponent ask us why so much before folding. Kind of hoping for a call from our other opponent here. Would like to see a turn with this hand, but nothing wrong with taking it down with ace high. So we take this one down. Nice little pot to win. Never hurts to win a hand with ace jack, which is not one of our favorite hands and is not that great of a hand overall. On to one of my poorest played hands of the night. We've got queen 10 suited. We are under the gun. We can just fold here, but we don't do that. We end up getting in with the limpers. There are a few of us before we eventually see a very active player across the table make a raise. He's going to bump it up to $50. Then we get some other kind of odd news. We see a call of this very large bet. And closing the action here, I think it's not too terrible to make the call. We're going to go three ways to the flop. So we've got a decent chance with a decent hand going multi-way, I guess. I'll, I don't know. I think this is pretty terrible, guys. I don't know why I'm even thinking about this. I could have just got away from this one early, lost $0, but also won $0. So anyway, we go ahead and put in the $50. We're going to see a flop, hoping we can hit something, have some sort of monster draw on this one. Unfortunately for us, that is not exactly what happens. The flop is 986 with only one spade. So we do have a gut shot to the nuts, but I don't think that's going to quite be enough. Action gets to me. I check. We see the initial razor, the one who bumped it up to $50, shove all in for around 400 bucks. Okay, that's obviously going to be terrible news for us, especially when we see the other player almost snap call. I fold, obviously, and we see a massive cooler with pocket aces going up against what would eventually be revealed to be pocket kings. So we're going to lose this hand. We lit some money on fire. What the hell were we doing? I don't know. Let me know if you think this is super terrible. I don't think we were nearly deep enough to make this play a profitable one though. So, oh well, mistakes were made. On to the next one. Looking down at King Queen of Diamonds in this one, that's right, we've got 40% of a Royal Flush. We are going to go ahead and raise it up to $15 from middle position in this one. We see middle position two and the cutoff making the call. 
So we're gonna go multi-way, as it seems like always, to the flop. Ends up being a pretty reasonable flop for us. We are flopping the nut flush draw on an ace high board. Obviously this is a great board for our range and for our hand. I'm gonna bet out $30 here, and we see the middle position two player, not think about it for too long before putting in the fold. Then it gets to the cutoff, who gives us some pretty weird news. This is a kind of spastic player that we've seen make some interesting plays, some tight plays, some loose plays. I don't know what to make of this guy. He raises it up to $60, though. He min clicks it back to us. So we don't have that much in front of us, guys. We started this handoff with about 220 bucks. So I think it's time to make a move. I think we can pretty much rip it in here with our nut flush draw. If he has a flush draw, awesome. We've got him almost dead. If he's got an ace, that sucks. But at least we've still got about 40% equity. Unfortunately, when I make the, my bet, he calls almost immediately. Don't know what he has until the turn comes down ace and he flips over ace eight. Yeah, he flopped two pair and turned a boat. That sucks. Not the hand we were hoping to be up against. Pretty weird spot for him to have the hand, I think. But we're going to lose this one. He takes it down. Blech. A little late hitting the record button on this one, but we've got king, queen, offsuit from the hijack this time. We see a player, the same player from the hand before, open to $15 from early position. We see an extremely loose player make the call. I decide to just call this time with offsuit Broadway. I think this is fine, but I also think I could 3-bet maybe a little bit of the time. I eventually make the call. That's where we hit the record button. We're off to see a flop, which comes down 10, 9, 8 with two spades. So we do have the king of spades, which is nice, and we have a gut shot to the absolute nuts. So all of that feels pretty reasonable. We see the early position player bet $30. We see the other player make the call. Action's on us. We decide we're going to go ahead and make the call also. We're trying to see a turn here, and we've got a specific turn in mind. However, that turn is not the eight of clubs. So not a great card for us. We see the early position, initial razor check, the other player checks, and I've really got no reason to bet my hand at this point, I don't think. Maybe I could try some sort of weird bluff, but I don't think it'd make a ton of sense. So I check, and we're hoping to see some help for us on the river. That's not what we see, though. We see a seven. Early position bets, $125 now, a very large sizing. So I'm very confused what he, exactly he could have in this spot that he was opening under the gun that's so good now. Maybe Queen Jack? That's really all that makes very much sense to me. We see the player who calls a lot of hands make the call this $125. When the action gets to me, obviously I've got no decision. I'm folding here. And we see that player who had the full house that him before has another full house. He opened 10-8 from early position and got there with another full house. So... Good thing we got out of the way, yikes. A little late hitting the record button on this hand as I really didn't think anything exciting was gonna happen. We've got eight, seven suited. We're opening a $15 pre-flop from middle position and we end up going like four ways to the flop. So not exactly what we had in mind, but hey, we could flop a monster with this hand. That's not what happens though. Paired board with an eight and one spade. So kind of a middle of the road flop for us, but not terrible. I check, and the action ends up checking through in this hand, so we're not too sad about that. We get to see a free card, and that kind of makes us think nobody has a 9, because this multi-way, surely somebody would have done something. Turn comes down, the 4 of diamonds. I'm going to check again. I think this plays better as a check call, and sure enough, we see an active opponent bet out $30. When the action eventually folds to me, I think this is a pretty straightforward call. He's going to be trying to take this one down with a lot of different holdings, so we make the call. We are off to see a river which comes down a king, obviously not the best card for us, but when we check and we see our opponent check back, he says he's got three pair. I show my hand and I'm good somehow. I don't know what hand I was up against, but we're up over 300 now. We're hoping that we can get a double up, be back to even, and build a nice profitable session. One hand at a time, one win at a time. This next hand's a bit of a weird one. We've got around $300 in front of us. We're looking down at pocket nines from the small blind. We see an open to 25 from the under the gun player. And we see under the gun two make a three bet to $125. Uh, we've got pocket nines here, which was a hand we were more than willing and more than excited actually to play. But seeing an open and a three bet to those sizes, I think we just have to fold it here, guys. Um, let me know what you think. I feel like with $300 in front of us, our only play here would be to just rip it in. So I think this is just a fold and move on. But it did not feel good folding pocket nines. I think we need to be playing a little bit deeper. But yeah, folding the pocket nines preflop. What are you going to do? Looking down at pocket aces, the best hand ever created. We've got two black aces from the hijack. We see a player open to $15 under the gun. I'm going to raise it up to $45 when it folds to me. And he thinks about it for a little bit before saying, I'm going to make the call. This is for the viewers. 
We appreciate it, buddy. Let's go to a flop. Hopefully, we can play an exciting one. Flop comes down, an exciting flop. It's a king, queen, eight flop. He ends up checking to us. That should be a pretty good flop for his range. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet out here. I bet $35, so a little bit of a down bet in this one. I think I like the sizing. Tell me, guys what, tell me what you think, guys. But we are pretty happy when he just makes the call. If he raises here, obviously we could be in a weird spot, but this is a player that's 100% going to be re-raising with kings or queens pre-flop, so we don't have to worry about too, that too much. Turn comes down a nine. We're gonna go ahead and continue betting here. He, after he checks, I bet out $60, hoping we can just continue to print value. Unfortunately though, that's all the donations we're gonna get from him. That's all the action he's willing to give to the viewers. He thinks about it for a little bit before putting in the fold. We're gonna take this one down with aces. Wanted to play a big one, was hoping this was gonna be our chance to get unstuck for the night, but not so much. However, we'll take down a decent hand and we appreciate his donation to the viewers. In the biggest hand of the night, we're looking down at ace, king, suited from the button. Great hand, great position. We see a raise to $10 and a call or two from early position. I'm going to raise it up here. Obviously, we've got a premium. We are ready to play a big pot. I raise it up to $50, and we see just the initial raiser and one other player make the call. So did we expect the initial raiser to call? Almost all the time. Do we expect this other player to call? Well, he calls almost every hand. So we've got a great hand. We've got some dead money in the pot. Can we flop a pair or a flush draw or something? Can this be the hand where we get out of the hole? Well, pretty great flop for us. King high flop with two diamonds. We're very happy with that result. When the action checks to me, we see the initial raiser and the other play for with check. We're putting in a bet here. We decide to size up to $130. I don't think there's too much wrong with this size. We expect the initial raiser to show up with nothing a lot of the time and then for the other player to fold or call with almost nothing unfortunately we see the initial raiser shove all in for around 420 dollars effective when the player who calls seemingly ever bet makes the fold i don't think we have too many options here we're gonna stick it in we put it in and we get some pretty bad news our opponent tells us he has aces we're hoping he could possibly be joking Unfortunately, it turns out he is very much not joking. That's a massive cooler. We need a king and only a king, but we don't get one on the turn or the river. That was a massive pot of over $700 and we are losing it. We're out guys, long night, did not feel very good. Picked up some big hands, could not make anything good happen with them. Had a huge draw in that early hand that we lost. Just a tough night overall, and then to run ace, king into aces and flop a king before we get the money in, nothing you can do about that one. So booking our first loss in quite some time. Almost forgot this part. We're not actually gonna go over all of our results from 2023. Instead, we're gonna look at these. These are our results since going full-time playing poker. I'm not super happy with these um, in terms of the amount of hours. The hourly is fine. The amount of money is whatever. Um, I'm just not putting in enough hours is the concern, and I need to branch out and start playing in some other games and be willing to play a little bit more deep stacked in some bigger games. So that's going to be the goal going forward. We're going to get after it pretty hard in the new year. We actually have a trip planned to Tulsa. So if anybody knows how the Tulsa casinos feel about filming in their cash games, I would appreciate you letting me know down in the comments. I'm also going to make a community post about that asking if anybody knows anything about it. So we're getting ready to do that. But anyway, there are the results as promised. I'll make a way more in-depth video about my overall results for the entire year, which were pretty good. Much better than the small sample size here. I actually had a Hendon Mob result, which is pretty cool. So anyway, into the actual outro. Unfortunately, that's all we've got for this one. In for 600, out for zero. That's a pretty big L. It's actually our biggest loss since going full time, but nothing to be concerned about. Pretty standard situation. I think some pretty standard hands, or at least the bigger ones were. That's okay, all part of the game. I hope you all had a happy New Year's. We spent some time with friends. We went and saw the mixtapes at the Galois. If you're from Springfield and you've never seen the mixtapes or you've never been to the Galois, I highly recommend it. They do New Year's Eve upright and the mixtapes are fantastic. Put your poker-related New Year's resolutions down in the comments and let me see them. I will let you know what I think of them I'll, and I'll let you know what some of mine are. Let's have a profitable and exciting 2024. Have a good one guys. Hit that like button. I'm sure you already have if you stayed around for this long. I appreciate all the new subscribers. Have a happy new year's and we'll see you on Tuesday with another video.